Hello, in this tutorial I will be teaching you how to do ambient occlusion in Maya. The version I'm using at the moment is 2010, so lesser versions, things might be a little different, but if you have a you know, pretty fair knowledge of the general interface of Maya, you should be able to pick it up. So basically I'm just going to start this off with a quick run through of what ambient occlusion is. I will also put the link to the wiki page in the sidebar of the YouTube channel. So basically, ambient occlusion is a shading method used in 3D computer graphics which helps add realism to local reflection models by taking into account attenuation of light due to occlusion. Ambient occlusion attempts to approximate the way light radiates in real life, especially off what are normally considered non-reflective surfaces. So basically, as you can see in this image here, around where there's more mesh, it's going to be reflected a lot harder, so you get these nice gradient effects with very little lighting at all. So first off we're going to start by setting up the shaders. To do this we go to Window, Rendering Editors, Rendering Editors, then Hypershade. So as you can see here you have Create Mantle Ray Nodes and Create Maya Nodes. But first off we're going to create a ma uh, Maya Node and that's going to be a Surface Shader. So surface Shader is created middle click and drag it down into the work area which is here this allows us to pretty much mix and match the shaders with other special effects in this case it will be ambient occlusion so after we have the surface shader and we've dragged it down to the work area open up the mental ray nodes just by clicking and holding and going to mental ray and there's a lot of tabs here um, ambient occlusion is in the textures tab so pretty much it's this one here, we're just going to be going for this one, don't worry about any of these others, just the MIB and occlusion, and click and it should automatically put it in your work area. Then we're going to highlight the ambient occlusion, push down control, middle click and drag it on top of the surface shader. This will make this connection here between the two, so the surface shader will share properties of ambient occlusion. Okay, so once this is done, just select your surface shader here, and in this tab here, you go to ambient occlusion, and the samples. At the moment it's set to 16. The samples pretty much decide the, quali the overall quality of the final render, and the effect of the ambient occlusion, I guess. Um, 16 is pretty low, it's going to be really, really grainy looking, the um, ambient occlusion, so a recommended one I would suggest is 256. I wouldn't go any higher than that because it does increase rendering time quite a bit. So Once that's done we can close Hypershade. I'm just going to minimize it because we're going to need that soon. And we can set up the scene a little bit I guess. So because ambient occlusion relies a little bit on the background color, so the way that um, the gradient effects are used from the light reflecting is fairly dependent on the background color. So for a better overall effect, I'm going to change the background color of the render to white. Now I'm just going to set up a basic scene, pretty much going to drag out a plane, just a normal polygon plane, go into shader mode, and draw a sphere. Okay, when that's done, you open up back up Hypershade, with your model still selected, select the surface shader, select your model, right click on the surface shader and go assign material to selection. As you can see I haven't done this to the ground plane that's pretty much just because it, w it will appear as the sphere blending into the plane because they'll both have a very strong white color. Okay, After the scene's set up we need to set up the rendering settings so basically we need to render using mental ray so render using, go down to mental ray, need to go to quality, it's taking a little while to load, change it to production, and then change multi-pixel filtering to Lankos. Once that's done you can close it and click the render button. And 
as you can see you get that very nice looking ambient effect on the sphere.